Hello everyone. In this video I will show you how you can use knowledge graphs to prompt large language models so that instead of using plain text conversations like this where it's quite hard to get the context both for humans and for the AI you can use a representation like this that shows you the main ideas inside a conversation or a text how they relate to one another that indicates what are the main clusters of ideas so words or concepts that tend to belong together in the same context where you can zoom into these clusters and generate new ideas that relate just to them. So bypassing the whole structure and kind of focusing on a certain aspect of a conversation, which can be really useful. And where you can also use the structural insights about the graph to identify the blind spots inside. So the topics that could be better connected, but are not connected yet. And then use those gaps identified using network science to generate new research questions or insights that would bridge those gaps. So for example here, if I'm choosing these two topics, I could click AI Insight Generation and then it would generate uh, an idea or a question that would help me link those two topics together. And by the way, you can use it both as an interface, but also you can export all this data as a JSON file here and then uh, import it into your chat GPT conversation or into custom GPT, for example, and use it to improve and enhance the AI results that you're getting from your current models and tools. If you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate using a real example. We'll be using an app that's called Infranodus. And to begin, we go to the apps page here and click brainstorm an idea and we choose a topic that we want to begin with. So for example, here I'm going to say knowledge graphs and LLMs. And you have an option here to conduct a standard chat GPT like uh, chat with the system, or you can also choose live AI ideation model. It can be more, more interesting for this demonstration because then you can see the workflow much better. So if you click that uh, and then you choose a, a new graph and then click visualize you will have the visualization of what you just added where the words are the nodes so knowledge graph llm and the co-occurrences are the connections and then the built-in gpt model generates an idea that would link those ideas together so for example here it adds some more context to this conversation and you have control of what you're adding inside which is great so here it adds a little bit more information about uh, how what LLMs and uh, knowledge graphs are and how they relate to one another and then we can generate a bit more ideas here based on the two topics identified by the system so for example it identifies we're, we're talking about complex graphs and language networks and here it's talking about how leveraging a no network model that encompasses knowledge and language we can visualize complex ideas using graphs in an LLM framework so at the beginning, as you can see, we're just adding some ideas inside and we're, we are already using the structural information about this discourse to generate ideas and questions. If you would like to do that, you can also generate questions that would uh, develop this discourse further and add more context. And you actually have full control of how the conversation evolves. So for example, here, if you, let's say, want to focus a little bit more on the aspect of data visualization, for instance, you can select this topic here, data visualization, then go into the insight model module and then click on the topic and then ask it to generate an idea that would uh, develop this discourse further or this, this aspect of the discourse further. So kind of like developing this particular topic of the conversation. So it gives you a much more granular control over the conversation because in the standard ChatGPT interface or if you're just using a standard um, model it will probably take the whole context and here you're actually manually selecting what you would like to interact with and while it's sending prompts it can also send the structural information about the underlying graph as well so that your responses would be much more related to your discourse but you can still focus on the specific aspects of it using the knowledge graph for example here i can say okay uh, talk about something else. So for instance, I can look at the graph also and choose uh, some topics here like enhance LLM. And then what I like to do is to select the opposite sides of the graph. So I'm focusing on some stuff that I find interesting, like let's say enhancing LLMs with knowledge graphs. Okay, so I select those here, go into AI insights, and then I ask it to generate some ideas that would relate to these four concepts. And once it generates it, it adds a little bit more context 
into this conversation, right? So I can see this cluster here appearing, the yellow one, that was the last statement that was added that kind of talks about uh, how you can get more insights uh, by visualizing connections between data. And if I click on that, I can generate also a research question. That's another interesting approach that you can use, that you select the parts of the graph that you're interested in, and then you generate a research question. And then, kind of using this uh, agent workflow, you feed this question back into the AI. So here I'm going to just ask it to elaborate on the statement and have it generate a response that would answer the question that it itself generated. And to have it sort of develop this topic of how analyzing connection patterns in large data sets uh, helps us identify hidden trends by showing relationships and clusters that are not immediately obvious, leading to new insights into behavior. So this is great because it really shows how knowledge graphs can be really interesting for LLMs because they allow you to see the structure, they allow you to see what is not yet connected and then generate new ideas in this direction. So as you can see, we're moving away from the generic stuff that are usually generated by those models into something much more specific and much more interesting as long as we can guide the conversation through by looking and interacting with the knowledge graph structure. We can also use some of the automatic tools inside Infernodus for that. So for example, how I showed you at the very beginning, you have this blind spots feature that identifies the topics that could be better connected. So for example, here we have one on data analysis and data visualization. You see it's two different clusters. They are connected through graph and enriching graphs, but maybe it could be interesting to develop them further. So we can click here, inside question, that would link those two topics together. And we can either think of an answer to this question or we can feed it into the model and have it generate an idea for us, which is an approach that I like to use more because then if I'm really interested to discover a certain topic, I want to think together with the model. I don't want it to think for me. So it's a very nice process where you generate questions, you try to think of the answers, maybe you write something down, you can also add your own data here or you also have the model generate something, but you are thinking with it. So it's kind of like having uh, an intellectual sparring partner or a conversational partner. So for example, here it talks about how employing a graph LM framework transforms abstract data into visual networks, making intricate patterns and relations within big data sets immediately discernible, thus unveiling previously obscured insights. So here it's connecting those two topics a little bit better. Uh, recalculates what are those topical clusters and we can reiterate and ask the system to show some other gaps and generate some more ideas that would connect them together. So for example here graph visualization and pattern recognition. And what you can also do here is to uh, prompt the model to take the structure of the graph more into account when it generates new ideas. So if you don't check this here, which says derive from the context, it's going to come up with uh, ideas that help you expand this discourse, um, which is quite useful if you're just starting to think about a certain idea. So you want to build uh, on top of the structure and you want to go beyond the periphery of this knowledge. But sometimes, like in this case, for instance, those two clusters are almost completely disconnected. So you probably want to make them better related to one another. And uh, it will also make the whole discourse much more coherent. So in this case, you can select this and then generate inside question. So it's going to come up with the question that would link those two clusters together. And then you can either think of an answer to this question which says how can a graph LLM framework by visualizing and enriching abstract concepts help identify and cluster previously obscure patterns in large data sets. So it's kind of talking about how we can actually use this framework to identify um, hidden data and let's feed it back into the system and try to see what it generates but now based on the content of this conversation. So here for instance uh, it says that it does that through clustering and how we can then uh, use this clustering information to understand uh, how those ideas belong together and what are the gaps between them. So it's kind of like uh, showing us a technical aspect of how, how we can advance with that. If we like the idea which is generated, we can save it into the graph. We can also generate more responses and then move on and have the system generate more ideas for us. So if at any point you don't want to use the graph itself, but you would like to uh, use the built-in module that 
reiterates through those clusters for you. You can always click next advice and then just follow the advice that the system is giving and it's going to constantly try to help you link the topics that are not connected yet and uh, if they're too well interconnected it's going to try to help you expand beyond the periphery of the discourse. In that way it follows the ecological thinking framework uh, which you have some information about here it might look a bit esoteric, but it has links to the research on that that I made. So you might find it interesting because basically it talks about how it's important to switch between four different modes where you focus on an idea, then you explore what what exists around this idea to, to, to bring more information inside, then how you can also shift between zooming in and zooming out. So kind of like focusing on something and then looking at the big picture. and. Basically, Infranodus is always guiding you through this process. Here, it actually proposes something really interesting that I also wanted to demonstrate that is quite useful when you're using knowledge graphs. It says that some nodes on the graph, uh, they are uh, more important than others, so we can select them and then generate something in connection to them. And as you can see, it actually selected the nodes that belong to different clusters. So that's quite interesting. It's those three graph uh, relationship and pattern and now we ask it to generate some ideas that would connect them together. So there they're becoming much more interconnected which in turn helps us also connect those clusters much better and we can generate a few ideas and generate some some more content uh, that would make this whole discourse more interconnected. Then as we move on another thing that at some point the system is going to propose is that it will say, okay, you have some nodes uh, that are too influential in the discourse. So for instance, it's uh, here it's graph pattern and concepts, those, those bigger ones. What happens if you select them and remove them from the graph so that you can see which other topics pop up? And that's a very nice approach because it's like you are pretending, okay, let's, let's say we're not talking about those uh, most important concepts in relation to this discourse. What would happen if we focus on the Latin topics that exist underneath? So this is another really interesting approach to use. You uh, peel off the top layer of ideas and then try to look what exists underneath. So for example, here you see where we're looking at hidden trends, data inside, data clustering, network language. So much more specific technical concepts that can be very interesting if we want to get a little bit more into detail and uh, more focused. You can actually repeat this process several times if you go to the analytics panel and click reveal underlying ideas then it's going to cut off the top layer of the most evident terms and then get to the more specific concepts. So this is how you, you could use it as well. By the way you also have those AI insights in the analytics panel here so, for instance, uh, if you click here, it just kind of shows you the summary and the blind spot questions. So, if you like what you see, you can also feed it back into AI and then have it generate uh, a response to that question based on the graph structure. And usually that will also help you develop this discourse further, make it more interconnected and diverse at the same time. Finally, you don't have to do this step-by-step uh, -step using this AI insight tool. You can also use a chat GPT mode itself. So here you would go to brainstorm an idea and then knowledge graphs and LLMs and then you choose chat GPT mode. Uh, let's save it as a new graph, visualize and what happens here is that you're just basically chatting with the model but when it provides you with the answers it's going to use the structural information behind the graph to help you come up with interesting uh, ideas. So for example here it generates a response, knowledge graphs organize data in a structured way while LLMs generate and understand complex text by tapping into vast data sets, so kind of like the differences between the two. And then let's say um, if I just type in what else, the interesting part here is that it's going to look into the structure of the discourse and then as it's quite disconnected it's going to try to come up with something that connects all of those ideas together. And then you can use the same approach as we did previously where you uh, either look at the graph, interact with it, select the concepts that you want to further develop and use the AI module to then generate some content in relation to that, either by generating an idea or a question. So for example here I'm going to generate a question that connects those, to those 
four topics that I selected and then I'm going to use the model to generate an answer to this question. I'm going to feed it back into the model and then it's going to generate a response that would connect those ideas a little bit better. So I'm guiding the conversation using the knowledge graph. Or I can also use the ready-made insights here where it says, uh, okay, here is a blind spot identified, actually shows it in the network. And uh, then once it's generated, you can actually feed that question uh, into AI and then have it answer that question and then put back the response. So for example, here uh, it's already providing a response, which I can also save into my notes to the conversation. So I have a few parallel conversations happening here at the same time, right? Or I can actually uh, feed this question directly into the uh, chat GPT mode. So I copy this conversation, this, this question, and then I feed it as a prompt to chat GPT. And then it comes up with a response to that question that becomes part of the graph as well. So as you can see, there are multiple options available here, depending on how you want to conduct this conversation. If you would like to have it in the standard chat GPT style, you can do so by just looking um, at the responses that the knowledge graph generates and adding the parts that you find interesting. And usually I recommend to add questions, not answers, because then the model will answer back to you. Or you can use this granular mode that I showed in the previous uh, example where you would just generate some ideas. And if you like something, you add it in the graph. Uh, but that happens in the standard mode. So you can also switch back to the standard mode here, text to network, or you can use AI chat if you would like this chat interactive mode. One last thing I want to show you is how you can export all this data because it's quite important. Let's say you don't want to use this interface. You generated a knowledge graph for a certain context uh, for some ideas or maybe you uploaded some PDF documents, whatever. You can go to the stats panel here. If you don't see it, you can activate it by choosing advanced mode here at the top. Then, then you go to the stats and here you have download for uh, full graph as JSON. So basically you will download this whole information including all the topics identified, uh, the gaps between them and so on. And then you can select the part that you like from this and uh, feed it back to the model. If you have an already existing graph, you can actually copy the link address. So I'll just show you how it looks. If you open it here, it's a standard JSON file. So you could also ask the system to just get this file directly if you have an API. But to use it with an API, you would have to make this graph public. So uh, there you would do uh, this, make public, and then you go to download, choose JSON here, and then uh, in the public view mode. So you would open this graph again as a public view, and then you would have the correct link here to the public version of this graph. You can also download it or open it by copying the link address and then you simply open this graph in the public view. So if you'd like to use this data later in uh, your own software or with uh, custom GPT functions, you could also do that. And of course, you can also export the whole conversation by clicking on the download button here, and then you export the whole conversation as a text file, and you can upload it back to ChatGPT, for instance, if you want to continue using a standard interface. So it's all really interoperable interoperable and you can always uh, exchange between different uh, interfaces if you like but just kind of using the Infranodus interface to generate the initial knowledge graph and to use all these statistical insights about it to then uh, tell the model what are the most important parts and also to have this awareness yourself. So if you would like to try it you can do that on infranodus.com and also please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed when the new videos are out. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I will be happy to help you. Thank you.